It's long overdue. Yes, Game Changer is back. And on today's uh, show, we've got a very interesting situation. For the first time ever on Game Changer, I am forced to use a specific shape. And I literally mean shape. So the tactic must look like a circle on the tactics screen. So can we make a tactic that looks like a circle work in the game? That's my Game Changer challenge for today. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Um, this is a channel where I do content for Football Manager. Um, I'm back in the groove once again. And I've decided to start with uh, this uh, series of Game Changer shows. I've, I've been having a tough time lately because uh, my mom passed away. So as far as those long-term saves are concerned, I was a bit reluctant to start uh, dive into them. Instead, I've decided to do something different. And um, I've decided to focus more on uh, Game Changer episodes, bring your tactics and... Uh, yeah, other things that can help the community. So once again, if you're a member on Discord, you know how to get onto the Game Changer episodes. And on today's show, we've got a very interesting situation. We are off to Germany. Uh, we've got a save from Mibi. It's Schalke. And it's a circular tactic. So this is a pretty interesting save. We've got um, the transfer window is just closed. Due to the amount of transfers, there's no team cohesion or hierarchy. It does need some nursing during early matches. I Yes, I found that out in the safe. <laughs> this is the fifth run of Bundesliga with this title. It's meant to be the final one. Um, Leipa, I set my own rules for my Bundesliga challenge. Therefore, tactics can only be changed to the amount where it keeps the circle symmetrical. It has to be run for an entire season without positional changes. Okay, so we are, cannot play with any... We can't move them around, right? And it has to also maintain the shape of a uh, a circle. And uh, you need advice on mentoring, scouting, and individual training. And what traits to learn. Okay, cool. So let's look at your tactic. Yes, um, season has started. He's um, had um, a loss to Hertha Berlin, a uh, draw to Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, and let's look at the tactic. Yes, guys, this is the circle. Okay, so literally, um, the idea here is that you... Okay, for example, this guy's cannot be Tricotistas. Then it's not a circle anymore. It's flat, right? So he's got to have that edge in there. So it's going to be either AM, attacking midfielders, and then maybe a shadow striker, that makes sense. Attacking midfielders at Tricotista makes sense. And then we've got a roles here. We can do uh, a ball playing defender, ball playing defender, libero. The only problem with the libero is, and I quickly found that out as well, uh, when we played our, we did this on a live stream, right? Uh, I introduced this on a live stream and I played it on a live stream and you guys saw, I'm sure that when I raised it, about how when this guy, he moves, nice to have him moving forward. Every time he moves forward, if you play a tactic that's got like an AMC, a shadow strike, what's going to happen is this guy's going to get pulled out of position. We're going to concede goals, man. So, um, yeah. Um, so we've gone through this. And uh, you also wanted to talk about training and stuff. The long-term plan has to be, this is something that you want to keep on improving. Excellent, excellent. You want to just hip, hip, get the state-of-the-art, everything in there. So your facilities are state-of-the-art. You've got uh, your youth recruitment is the best that you can do. So all th throughout the whole thing, you're going to have to keep going to the budget. you gotta got to going to keep going to the board, making these uh, improved training facilities requests. These are things that you'll have to end up doing, right? You're going to have to talk to them about increasing the junior coaching budget. You're going to have to talk to them about increasing. Um, eventually, they're going to have to improve the networking as well. It hasn't started yet, but they will. Uh, you, will you can go to them and ask them to do that. Uh, let's look at training as a group. I'm assuming that you've done boot camp training, right? So it's very important to do boot camp early in the season so that the players get fit fast. If I'm looking at a training, there, there is something that you can remove, right? So from this one, the early season tactical familiarity, because you've got match tactics, sometimes you can't you can't use this alone. You have to put attacking movement in. So what can you do? You can come into general and you can go to possession because possession gives you passing style and tempo. Think of physical. You now you got all the tactical familiarity slots. And you can also take this and do attacking movement. So you can get that um bone uh that the upcoming match bonus that we need, right? So you can use this and then you can save this, and this is a 
early season tactical familiarity. You can get it from this alone. Um, you get all the slots in, and we can we can do that. Now, um, in terms of uh, let's take a look at um, here tries long range passes can be good for these two. Although I would, well, it takes a while, right? So you got need passing vision and decisions. We're not going to look at the tactic just yet, but we're going to look at the positions I you would need some players to make killer balls from. These two guys are going to make, play their killer balls. These two players, you need this guy running under outside trap. These guys can be tight. These guys can learn uh, tight marking as well. So these are the important traits if you want to work on anything as far as training is concerned. So let's not go to the squad. Uh, dictates tempo is okay. Uh, got a defender. I assume that you sometimes use him as a playmaker, so that's fine. Uh, Marco Sensi refrains from taking long shots. It's a waste of... Uh, it's a waste to do this. Don't You don't have to train everybody in a player trait, right? So it it consumes CA. If you want to... Ref he's already not going to take long shots, right? So why why do that? It's cons Every trait you learn consumes something. Right? You don't want to do that. If you don't have to teach a trait, don't teach a trait. If you're playing with inverted wingbacks and you want him to get further whenever possible, it only really works in a system where there's going to be space. Now, chances are there's not going to be a lot of him having to get forward whenever possible. There's nothing he's going to do, right? He's not going to end up in the box scoring goals. He might come in late uh, if there's space. And that could just happen as a result of players in this tier moving into the box. Stays back at all times on a defender. Another one that you don't need, right? So... Training, this trade for a central defender is a waste of time, right? They're going to consume current ability, so let's not do that. So, in terms of mentoring, it's a really, there's a really easy way. First, I understand, I want to understand who are the players. So, this guy is spirited. Spirited is not too bad. It can still be a decent trade. Uh, this is a fairly, good, a, a fairly professional, and we got another uh, midfielder. So, we've got Basically, our attacking group is not too bad. We've got two very solid personalities. Um, in fact, we've got a whole bunch of them, man. Model professional here, midfielder. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, all right, good. you got a fantastic uh, fantastic group of uh, tutors here. So what you want to do is, um, you want to look for your high... I mean, the easiest way of doing it is find your players that you think are going to, you know, be phenomenal for the future uh you got two ways of doing this one is you give them as you know the benchmark for learning trait uh traits is very low when they're in the under 19 the moment you promote them it takes forever so either they learn all the traits early you have a choice learn traits early or promote right you to change their personalities so if you're looking here we got fairly determined balance balance so if i'm looking at the most outstanding players we're looking at rotundo Attacking midfielder in the center, uh, fairly determined. We got Dank, the defender as well, jumping reach. So we these are the four I would probably uh, move up. Stays back at all times. Honestly, don't bother. Not for a defender. Don't waste your time. Right? There's no there's no point. Right? Especially in this tactic that you have right now, because your defenders are going to be important. That some of the defenders need to be able to bring the ball out of defense. So come in here and remove this. This is don't 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 do that. Yeah. Okay. Try killer balls. Run with ball to center is fine for the AMC. Moves back ball to left foot. Not necessary. We can we can do this and I so we can actually move uh, these two guys to the main team already, right? So they can go and improve their personalities and then uh, move them back once they have uh, learned their personalities. Okay. There we go. Glianco and Marco Sensei Senese are gonna have a Big impact on this too. This guy, this guy, Abo is not estimated effect from group. None. So it's not going to affect. But these two will have an effect. Right. So the ones that we promoted, they will uh, start having um, an effect from these two players. So that's it. We've done our mentoring. So that's how you set mentoring up. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a couple of games. I'm going to share some highlights from the games that I've just played. And I'm going to explain what we what I did in the games, um, 
where I can, and then or we're gonna take it from there, and then we'll share what the sh share the tactic at the end of the day. So essentially, what we have is AP AP and Tracotista. I'm not a big fan of AP AP Tracotista because they're gonna slow the game down. Just um, we've got a playmaker here, so uh, I mean, if this was a target man, it'd be brilliant. But we don't have that option, right? So I'm probably gonna go AM AM and. Uh, AM, AM, Shadow Striker, or Dragon Tista, right? So we can use those roles. WP, White Playmaker is fine, but he's going to sit narrow, as you can see here. Uh, inverter Wingback is going to be used on a defend duty. They'll come into these positions here, and they'll hold out the positions. But the back line, no. I'll tr I mean, it's going to have to be a circle, ball playing, defender, ball playing, defender. Well, well you know, in the next game, actually, <laughs> I started with a Libero. Uh, but uh, over time, we, we ended up changing it, but we're going to change a few things along the way as well. So how did we do? Schalke thought the table. Uh, we st this You saw this on stream, right? I lost this game 2-0 against New York. We played so badly against New York, but we used the, we basically used our under-20s against New York. And then we played Werder Bremen in the first league game of the season. Again, uh, it was so-so. We weren't really, um, we put a fair bit of pressure on Werder Bremen. Um, however, a bit disappointing that we didn't manage to beat them, right? Uh, Werder Bremen were lined up like this and I'm still, I was still messing around with my formation. Uh, we didn't get the best combinations here in this match. Then I went into the next match and by now I've already got a, I kind of have an idea of how I want to play. So we went into this match against uh, um, Offenheim. Offenheim were playing a 4-2-3-1. And Schalke was playing the, uh, this tactic. And the goal now is for players like my inverter wingbacks to come into this area and create chances and hold their position. Right? We want uh, this shadow striker, this, this striker here to be moving between the lines. And uh, we want these two players, the white playmakers, to be creating a fair few chances. As you can see, the XG, there's, I mean, there's not too much separating the two sides. But, right, Schalke had the better chances. Right, look, look this, this is a glorious miss. It was late into the game, right? So our first goal, Vargas gets the ball, plays it back to our ball playing defender. Now, this at this point in time, I'm still using a libero. But this, you can see what happens with the libero, right? The li when the libero pushes out, right? If there's anybody here that wins the ball, the libero actually steps up and tries to close them down. And this is something that I want to avoid. Um, I quickly started paying attention to the movement of the libero. And we almost changed tactics after that. Now here, my inverter wingbacks are playing, still playing on support. This guy is still a libero. While he's helping, look at where he's ended up. Our libero is pushed right into the third. He's actually getting ready to attack. There's this Mansky, and we've got, this is the reason why these group of players, especially the guy in the center, he should have, tries to break offside trap. He gets into the box. Zimanski squares it for Yazizi, Yazizi. That was a very simple first goal. So second half, again, they try to clear the ball. Uh, we use a lot of opposition instructions in this game. Opposition instructions basically are put uh, closing down and marking on the goalkeeper, the entire back line. We do the same thing to the back line. Type mark their lone striker. Right, so here we go. This is uh, the, the Libero coming up to step up and clean up. But if he misses this header, look at the gap. His whole gap gets exploited. Something that was concern that concerned me. Vargas out to Zimanski again, slides it in for Zagagni and he scores second goal. So we... Managed to score two beautiful goals on the day. Uh, then our next match at, against Augsburg. Augsburg were actually in the table, just one position higher than us. And by now, I'm already uh, playing, uh, decided I would do something different with your with the tactic. So we, we're on the break. They clear the danger. It goes out for a throw. Pedro, okay. So Vargas gets the ball. He plays it back to the inverted wing back. Striker, AM, gets it. It's a simple goal. We stick the lead. Our next goal is going to come off a throw. A simple short throw into the box. I'm a huge fan of the short throw. This became a big match against Stuttgart. 
this is the match where I finally came up with a for like a formula that works. So by the time I got into my final match, our tactic had changed, right? So we don't use the Libero anymore because the Libero tends to come out too much. So we have a CD cover, ball playing defender, ball playing defender, work, uh, white playmaker, white playmaker, AM, shadow striker, AM, um, white playmaker. But one thing I did that you don't have in your tactic. Now, you tend to ask your inverter wing back not to take risks with the ball. I don't believe that should be the case because these guys are going to play a big part in creating chances. So we have the inverter wing back and an inverter wing back on defense. Because uh, in this match, this match actually uh, became the match where I did the changes on the during the game itself. Um, they scored early from a ridiculous drawing. After conceding that goal, I had to go into your drawing routines. I had to turn them back to default with the one exception of having like a fullback marking the uh, area of the far post. That's it. Just default, just add one guy to the far post. That's all I had to do. Because uh, things are, the set piece routines aren't that difficult to set up, right? For throw-ins, defend, defending throw-ins. So here we go. What a ball. Inverted wing back. Plays one through. Striker chips one over the top. And we get back into the game. Our second goal. White playmaker through to the AM. AM gets into the box. Slaps it home. 2 1 up at this point. And then they had a penalty of all things. I was screaming at the monitor. And now a third goal. Zimanski again gets inside. Crosses the ball. Manu takes it down. Third goal. We win this game 3 2. Looking at the corners, this is a set piece routine. Uh, I just modified yours slightly, right? So I put a defender, defender here, put the two wing backs inside, uh, left and right. Almost the same thing. Now, when it comes to throw ins, right? This is what I did. I, I, you know, I'm not using your your defensive throw in routines. I'm just using these. This, the only difference between this and the default ones are. There's, in the default routines, there's nobody here. So if I, you know, reset this to default, you notice there's no one here. So what I did was I just move this guy here. Uh, I just put this guy here and you and it's, and it's fine. You know, you don't have to change too many things. As far as the tag is concerned, we have a short, um, short throw-in routine. Uh, I don't know who's, who you've got set up to take your throw-in routines, but I uh, kept it short. As long as you have one guy attacking near and far post, you should be fine. Um, yeah. This was fine. And then as far as corner kicks are concerned, same principle, attacking. We kept it. Uh, you can do, I prefer mixed, like mix or short. Right? Or if you want to do it in the far post, this can also work in that sense. Right? So left and right are the same. I, though I did not look here, take a look at any of your free kicks. Uh, in terms of uh, the play instructions for this tactic, you can definitely remove the offside trap, right? Some matches I did that. And sometimes I made myself even more compressed. But in most cases, much higher line of engagement is fine. Uh, and then um, these are the team instructions. And then finally, these are the um, TIs. Now, you want to use dribble less. You don't want these guys to be dribbling a lot. Right? This is the one thing that is going to be a problem for this tactic is when everybody starts dribbling too much, you're just going to lose the ball. Uh, your biggest challenge are, is going to be uh, finding players for all these positions. These are tough positions to fill. Now you got this, um, the white playmaker, the inverted wing backs, both of them. You're going to have to look for the right kind of players. Now, for this group of players, you definitely need this player to have offside trap. And I like playing these guys like this, Zakani. He can play on the right or the left side. Now he is got a good pass on him, right? His passing vision decisions is pretty good. And you got Manu Garcia who can play passing vision decisions. Um, only problem with him is his finishing is absolutely shambolic. So when it comes to training these players now, we got to think about how we're going to train them because we're going to have to train uh, the players. Uh, we, we got to train to the strengths right now. So we got to look at our players right now. We, we already finally decided we've got a tactic. Uh, this is a tactic that we're going to be using so how do we train them? So let's take a look at Shimanski. Shimanski is playing as a playmaker down the right side. So we got him, you got him set as white playmaker on attack, which is fine. Strength is okay. Um, yeah, I guess this can help him out. Uh, likes to lob keeper is a waste. Don't do that. 
Right? There's, there's no point. He's never going to get into a position where he's going to lob the keeper. So don't get him to learn that trade. It's just a waste of space. It's a waste of his CA. If anything else, passing, vision, and decisions, get these get these up, then he can learn how to try the long game pass. That could be one. Uh, you want to concentrate on getting him to improve his uh, attributes first up. Because right now, that's the main area that he's got to improve in. So strength up, once he's get, it gets about 9 or 8 or 9, he can stop this completely. Uh, then we've got uh, Mataya Zagani. Now this player, he likes to um, anticipate. Acceleration is only 13. I don't think he can learn to break the offside trap. Attempts over he kicks, looks or pass. Looks or pass rather than attempting to score. That just There's just too many things here that are going to work against... Uh, I'm probably going to work against the um, likes to break offside trap. Yeah. This is about okay. Oh, uh, we have a problem, Houston, because you've got three players now who can create, right? But um, you need somebody in the center who's going to be the goal scorer, goal scorer himself. Right? So this guy, apparently he's the only one now. Right? So you only got one player. So he's going to be the outright the guy learning to score goals. So we're going to remove this. What he, we want to do in the long run is get him to learn beat offside trap. Acceleration is missing about one or two. So what we do is uh, we come here. Instead of endurance, stamina is 11. He needs endurance and acceleration. Once he's bummed up, you know, he can do the offside trap. Then we can use him to break through. This means that um, other strikers who are young, have to learn that as well. Like this guy, Montiel cuts inside. He can be a striker. Anticipation 11. You got to put this player on a program where his anticipation goes up. We can train him as a shadow striker. Okay. So he gets anticipation, composure, concentration off the ball. Passing, dribbling, finishing, first touch. Try killer balls often to get it. You've got a lot of players who've got killer balls at the moment. Eight. So, if anything else, you want players to start. You need a few more players that can break the offside trap. Got you want somebody playing in the center. His decisions aren't there yet. Anticipation isn't there yet. So once these traits are up, he can start trying to break the offside trap. So we don't want him to learn any other player traits, right? You don't want to force a player to learn player traits for the sake of it. So that's something that you want to do over time. Chikino. Uh, finishing 10, oh, it's not enough. So he can play as an AMC. Uh, he can most of the channels. Yeah, this is one of the players that can he can play on this side or this side. Right? So you don't have a lot of players for this position. This position is your weakest position at the moment. So you want players that can break the offside trap, who are fast, who got decent finishing and composure. So this is something that you want to focus on. The the problem right now for this for your team is. These three players, you don't have another generation that can come and take over and step into these three uh, into those positions to dominate. So that's how we set up the training, the mentoring, the tactic, and everything else. So yeah, this is crazy, man. We've got a circular tactic. I've never had a circular tactic. Oh, one thing I forgot to add. Opposition instructions. I, I do the I Maiden strategy with this quite a lot. So... I would recommend the Iron Maiden's uh, defensive strategy, which I've covered on the show before, on the channel. Uh, you're going to do, you're gonna use opposition instructions, something as well that I used in quite a few of my games. So opposition instructions, especially, you know, you got these three players up top that can put perennial pressure on defenses. So that's one other thing that you can definitely look at using. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, episode of Game Changer. If you have any other questions, you guys know where to find me. Please take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Once again, a thank, big thank you to all the patrons who've kept this channel going and everybody else on Discord. I love you guys. I'll see you guys very, very soon. You take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.